what the black man and woman needs to know about the nation, about the world, about themselves. Mohammed Speaks It. To order your 12-issue subscription to Mohammed Speaks newspaper, 313-371-7033. 313-371-7033. Kareem Bean Pie is the grand champion of all bean pies. The rich flavor and smooth texture takes this pie to a whole new level of delicious. One bite and you'll understand why people all over the country call daily to order Kareem Bean Pie. 313-371-7033. That's 313-371-7033. Kareem Bean Pie. This bean pie is delicious. Mohammed Speaks presents Messenger Elijah Muhammad's Teachings by Minister Khalil Shabazz every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. at Muhammad's Temple of Islam, 12609 East McNichols Road in Detroit. Brothers and sisters, we rise for prayer. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the Beneficent, the Merciful. So, Master's Day of Gemini, in which we now live, the alone that we serve, and the alone seeks for thine help and aid. O oh Allah, please guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom thou stole thy favors, not on the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray after they heard thy teachings. Say he, Allah is one God. Allah is he of whom nothing is independent, but upon whom we all depend. He begetteth not, nor is he begotten, there is none like him. And I bear witness that none is heard to be served worth the praise besides Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And I bear witness that the honor of Elijah Muhammad, that true servant and last apostle. I mean, we'd like to acknowledge the brothers and sisters that extended us the greetings of Assalamu alaikum. We have Sister Patrice Sykes from New Jersey. We have Brother Skies, I'm sorry, from New Jersey. Brother Tariq Muhammad from Michigan. Sister Hala Brooks from California. Sister Miriam Omar from Oklahoma. Minister Yusuf Hakeem from Oklahoma. Brother Stephen Cowan from Washington State. Brother Brian from Louisiana, Brother Calvin Shabazz from Atlanta, Brother Captain Hakeem from Richmond, Minister Kamal Islam from Richmond, and uh, Brother Mustafa and Sister Sharice Ali from Ohio. I'd like to say in the name of Allah, who came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad, and in the name of his last and greatest messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'd like to greet the brothers and sisters with the Nation of Islam's greeting words of peace of Allah. Islam. Today we like to talk about IUIC and Jesus was a Muslim. Now the first thing we want to do when we talking about because I've been watching bus stop them again this week and the thing that they like to do with brothers on the corner is they always like to say, well, where in the Bible does it say that Jesus was a Muslim? Because the thing about IUIC and they disrespect of the messenger is they never would want to have a real official debate. Because when you have a real official debate, then you have to tell the truth about the Bible. Now this comes from PBS.org. The article is called, What are the Gospels? It says, neither biographies nor objective historical accounts. The gospel resembles, resembled religious advertisements. So in this article, they had many different scholars writing about what is the New Testament. I mean, what is the Gospels? So I just picked out two. One of the uh, uh, professors, his name is L. Michael White. He is a professor of classic and director of the religious studies program at the University of Texas at Austin. It says gospels are not biographies. It says the gospels are not biographies in the modern sense of the word. Rather, there are stories told in such a way 
as to evoke, invoke a certain image of Jesus for a particular audience. He says they are trying to convey a message about Jesus, about his significance to the audience, and thus we have to take, we have to think of them as a kind of preaching as well as storytelling. That's what the Gospels, the good news, is really all about. Now, that's something that we never think about when we're talking about the New Testament. The New Testament is written for a particular audience. Now, what audience is the New Testament written for? We can go to Matthew 16, verse 18. This is when Jesus tells Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. When did Moses talk about a church? When did any of the Old Testament prophets ever talk about building a church? This is because the New Testament was written by the Christians. And this is why you see in the New Testament, you see all kinds of new concepts and ideas. So in Matthew 16, Jesus supposedly told Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. Then we can go even further than that. Because the messenger said, he said that Moses never said nothing about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's another concept and idea that the Christians was writing to a particular audience. Yes, sir. Talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Another concept that they talked about was being baptized. When did Moses talk about being baptized? When did any of the Old Testament prophets ever say, well, you need to be baptized. You need to be born again. I'm going to build a church. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. They never said that. Because the New Testament is not a historic account of Jesus. It is written by Christians for Christians. So another point that he makes that I really like. He says the Gospels are not biographies in the modern sense of the word. He says rather they are stories told in such a way to evoke a certain image of Jesus for a particular audience. These are stories, just like the messenger talks. These are stories talking about Jesus. Because if we was looking at Jesus from a historical perspective, do you think when Jesus, quote unquote, raised Lazarus from the dead, you think they wrote that in a newspaper like that? To talk about Jesus came and Mary and Martha and then he saw Lazarus. In, that ain't no history. That is just stories told about Jesus to a Christian audience. So let's go even further than that. This is the one that nails, put the nail in the coffin. It says the four Gospels that we find in the New Testament are, of course, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It says Mark is the earliest, probably written between 70 and 75. So this is how insignificant Jesus was to a Jew. They didn't write nothing about his life until 70 years after he was dead. That's how insignificant Jesus was to a Jew. Then we got to get the old bus stop. Because Jesus was insignificant to these Jews until the message. The real Jew, the white man, didn't care nothing about Jesus while he lived. They rejected Jesus and murdered him. And then 70 years after Jesus, that's when the Christians say, well, we can use Jesus. Since the Jews killed him, 
They don't care nothing about them. Now we can write to our audience about how Jesus is to save. Jesus came to save the world. So then no Jew, they didn't interfere with the Christians talking about, they didn't care about Jesus. Because Jesus was insignificant to the Jews until the messenger came around. And he still and Jesus still not significant to white Jews. Because the white Jew is the real Jew. They are significant to the black Jew. Because the messenger broke Jesus down. So let's go on with what he says. He says Mark is the earliest probably written 70 or and 70. Now let's this is another point that I want to make. This year will make 49 years that the messenger has been has passed away. Imagine if we didn't write nothing about the messenger for another 21 years. We can't even practice Ramadan the way the messenger said. We fasting with the Orthodox Muslims. We talking about the messenger on the mother plane. We saying the messenger had all, and he's from the hypocrite that song. It's been 49 years and there's so much stuff said about the messenger that he never said himself. Then we wait another 21 years. Then we start writing something about him. That's how it was with Jesus. Yes. 70 years after his death, now you want to start writing stuff about the man. Then you saying this what Jesus said. How in 70 and 21 more years, those of us who never saw him and we didn't came along to be in our 60s, think about the people who actually saw him. Who would be alive that would have saw the messenger in another 21 years? So how could the people after 70 years of the messenger passed away go tell us what he said? Right. Tell me Elijah Muhammad when he was in Chicago on this certain street, he said such and such and so and so. How would they know? That's the case of Jesus. The first gospel that was written about Jesus was 70 to 75 years after his death. So let's go even further than that. It says Matthew is next. Written somewhere between 75 and 85. Maybe even long, maybe even a little later than that. So notice how they giving you an average. It could have been about 70 to 75. Then they say Matthew could have been about 75 to 85. That big 10 year window. Because they don't know who wrote it. They don't know when they wrote it. They just know we can use whatever he said in our faith. So we think about 75 to 85 years somewhere in there. We'll call him Matthew. So let's go on even further than that. Then it says Luke is a little later still, being written between 80 and maybe 90 or 95. And John's gospel is the latest, usually dated around 95, although it may have been completed slightly later than that as well. So they really don't know when they was written, when they was completed, who wrote it? So when Bus Stop Bishop in the boys be talking about where in the Bible does it say Jesus was, well, it don't say that Jesus was a Muslim in the Bible. Not direct. So let's go on even further than that. This comes from another professor named Alan D. D. Callahan. He is the associate professor of the New Testament 
and Harvard Divinity School. This says the Gospels are not eyewitness accounts. Now, I didn't go through his whole article. I just pulled out a certain point that I want to make. He said it's now consensus in the New Testament scholarship to some extent that in the Gospels we're dealing with theologians. People who are reflecting theologically on Jesus already. That's another point that the messenger made. He talked about the theologians. Let's go to, this comes from the March 17th, 1967 Muhammad Speaks. The messenger says the white theologians or scriptural scientists have so fixed the Bible in their way that the truth is hard to understand. Though the truth is here in the Bible, God has raised me in the midst of you to interpret for you. I do my best to give you the truth without making any changes. I have no knowledge of anything I am teaching. Only what I lie in the person of Master Farad Muhammad has given me. This is what the messenger taught. And this is not what that hypocrite Lewis Eugene be teaching. Because the one thing about bus stop them that I hate is not what bus stop them say. It's what Lewis Farrakhan and his people say. They don't defend the messenger at all. But when they do say something, they say something where bus stops can say, so even black Muslims know that blacks are the true Jews. That's what I hate about this hypocrite. He don't say nothing in defense of the messenger, but when he do say something, he say something to support what the bus stop said. But when we look at the messenger, he is the one who taught us that theologians are the ones who wrote the Bible. Right. And they mix the truth up in such a way that is hard to understand. So the messenger told us that God had to come and raise up a messenger to teach the black man the truth of the Bible. Now let's look at some of that truth that would be so hard for us to understand if it wasn't for the messenger. This comes from Luke chapter 22, verse 41 through 44. It says, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. And there appealed an angel upon him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were, drop, great drops of blood falling down on the ground. This talking about Jesus. This telling the black man that Jesus was a Muslim. But if we wasn't taught by the messenger, we wouldn't even see this. This talking about how Jesus didn't want to do what God wanted him to do. And he making it plain. All the prophets had the same experience with Abraham. Supposedly, in the Bible, Isaac was his favorite son. So the Jews say. Isaac or Abraham loved Isaac. But God told Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. So now, Abraham got to show he a Muslim. He got to submit his will to do the will of Allah. Absolutely. Because his will was not to kill his son. That wasn't his will at all. He loved his son. But God told Abraham, I want you to sacrifice. So Abraham was struck. 
Now I got to kill my son that I love. So according to the Bible, Abraham had it not. About to stab ice. But God told him it was a ram in the bush. And he sacrificed the ram instead of ice. That was Abraham proving that he was a Muslim. Submitting his will to do the will of Allah. Then we got Job. Job was a Muslim. Job was rich. Job had a whole lot of children, a whole lot of riches. But the devil came one day and told God, you protecting Job. If you take this fence from around Job, he'll curse you to your face. God told the devil, do what you want to do to Job. That's how in the Bible they showing you who a Muslim and who not a Muslim. That's right. God telling the devil, do what you want to do to him. Because in the Holy Quran, it says that Islam is the nature in which Allah has created man. Yes. It says there is no altering what Allah has made. So if you are Muslim and it's your nature to submit to the will of Allah, even if Allah put the devil on you, let the devil have his way, you still go submit if this is what Allah wants. Then I'm just going to go through it and trust in Allah. I don't know why he's doing it, but I'm just going to trust in Allah to see what this devil going to do. So that's how it was with Job. Yes. He trusted in Allah. He didn't understand. Losing children, losing his riches, getting so sick that he had sores from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Job's condition was so bad. His wife looked at him and said, curse your God and die. Job said, yea, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That was Job. Yes. I don't care what he do. I'm still going to trust him. Please. That was showing that Job was a Muslim. Yes. Entire submission to the will of Allah. So in this verse, Jesus didn't want to die. Jesus told God, if you can let this cup pass. Jesus was praying so hard. They say the sweat was dripping from his brow so much, it looked like blood was coming off his face. That's how much agony Jesus was in to tell God, could you please let this cup pass? But in the end, Jesus say, but if it be your will, thy will be done. That's right, brother. Minister. That's a must. <laughs> so when, when we look at Jesus and we see how Jesus did all that to submit his will to our life, then we got to compare Jesus to the Jew. Because bus stop bishop and everybody said, oh, Jesus was a Jew. Jesus was not a Jew. Jesus was a Muslim. That's right. So we got to look at the nature of Jesus and look at the nature of a Jew. So this comes from Luke chapter 11, verse 7, 47 through 51. Jesus says, Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulcher of the prophets, prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and ye build their sepulchers. Therefore also, said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute. Jesus says the blood that or that the blood of all the prophets 
which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. Think about that. Jesus got to go through all of this agony and pain and suffering to submit his will to do the will of Allah. Then you got a Jew that will kill a prophet. It's already hard enough for the prophet to come and do what he got to do. Then you got a no good blue eyed Jew that'll kill that prophet just for telling them the truth. That ain't no muscle. That's a death. That's right. Because Jesus said, He said that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of this world. He said it may be required on this generation. That's something that bust our bishop and this hypocrite Lewis Eugene don't never share with the black man. Because when we listen to bust our bishop, they do what you call cherry picking. You got some people who don't really try to give you an understanding of what the scriptures say. They just cherry pick. They pick the best verses to try to prove their point. Just cherry pick. I'm going to take this verse. I'm going to read this verse, but I'm not going to read that. Because to understand the difference between a Muslim and a Jew is you got to read what the prophets did and what the Jews did. You got to understand that none of the prophets was Jews and Christians and Israelites. The prophets was sent to the Jews. Yes. The messenger said Jesus was the last prophet sent to the Jews. That's right. He told us that Moses was the first. Moses wasn't a Jew. Moses wasn't an Israelite. The messenger told us that Moses was the first prophet sent into the caves and hillsides of Europe to civilize the white man. Yes. That was their first prophet. But in the Bible, it says that Moses went to Egypt for some children of Israel who were suffering enslavement by Pharaoh. That is another story told by the white man. Because Moses never went to Egypt. At least he wasn't in Egypt for no Jew. He went to the caves and hillsides of Europe. Because the honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us. He said the white race has 6,000 years to rule. He said when the white man was made on the island of Pilon called Patmos in the Bible, he said they went back to the Holy Land and caused trouble for six months. He said they caused the holy people to fight and kill each other. He said once the king realized what was going on, he said he rounded up all the devils they could find. He said he stripped them of their costumes. He said he made them walk barefoot 2,000 miles through the hot burning sand. And when you listen to them old school Muslims teach about them devils walking through them burning sands, they said they didn't let them devils walk at night. At nighttime, the sand cool at night. They ain't let them walk in the morning. They said they marched them devils at high noon when the sun is blazing in the sky. All right, devils, let's go. Had all them devils marching them barefoot through hot sand. Hot sand is like lava. I don't know how many people went to a beach. When you go to the beach and you get in the sand, it seems like that sand be all, all over your body. It get all in between your toes and it ain't like just some dirt. Sand a little different than dirt. Sand more rough than dirt. Sand like sandpaper. And you walking through this sandpaper at high noon when the sun is blazing. They were trying to kill as many devils as they could. 
So the messenger said when they finally made it to the caves and hillsides of Europe, he said they was roped in. He said they was roped in for 2,000 years. He said they lost all knowledge of themselves. He said they went completely savage. Started walking on their own fours like all other animals. Messenger told us that that's where the white man befriended the dog. That's where the dog became man's best friend. Messenger said the dog had a top position in the family of the white man. Messenger told us that the white man, when he would be out hunting or whatever he would be doing, and he would leave the cave. He said the dog would take over. That's when the dog would become the white woman's boyfriend. Yeah, that's it. The white woman started two timing with the dog. <laughs> yes, that's where we pick up all this filth and indecency, mm -hmm. all of this oral sodom. Mm -hmm. Ain't no sodom comes from the white man's 2,000 years in the cave. We live in a cave man's life. Yes. Practicing all kind of filth and indecency from the white man in the cave. So the messenger said, after 2,000 years of the white race being in the cave, being completely savage, they didn't know how to cook their food. They would eat raw meat just like the dog. They say the dog is the only thing the white man could get along with was a dog. That's the white man. He smells like a dog. Yes. He act like a dog. Yes. He look like a dog. If you look at some of them white boys in their eyes, they got dog eyes. Look like a dog, smell like a, act like a dog, just a beast. Messenger said all of the filthy and indecent names in the Bible represent the white race. That's right. When the prophets saw them, they say he's a beast. He's heartless and mercil merciless to human beings like a beast. That's the white man. Yes, sir. So the messenger said Moses was the first prophet sent to the white race. He went into the caves and hillsides to civilize them. That's right. Messenger says Moses had a hard time to civilize the devil. A hard time. Yeah. The devil was completely savage. So the messenger said that it was Moses who put the devil on his path to rule. Moses was the one who taught the devil the forgotten trick now. The forgotten trick knowledge that Yakub taught them. We never, I know when I first was reading the messenger's history on Yakub or on Moses. My whole thought of Moses was completely different from what the messenger taught. Moses teaching them how to lie. Moses teaching them trick knowledge and how to rule the black man inside. Go lie to him. Tell him lie. Tell them this trick. Now this is how you rule. This, the, the messenger said that Yaku is the one who taught them about a mystery God. Teaching us that God is a spook. Moses teaching them the forgotten trick knowledge. I'm like, wow. That was something. So it was Moses that got them out of the cave. It was Moses that taught them the forgotten trick knowledge. Then the messenger said, from Moses to Jesus, there were many minor prophets. Then the messenger said, Jesus came on the scene and he tried to convert the Jew. He said, but Jesus had to learn of their history. He had to learn he couldn't convert the Jew. But let's go on with the history of the prophets. Jesus said that these Jews murdered God's prophets. A Jew not going to submit his will to do the will. He going to kill the prophet. Yes. Because the Jew don't want to hear nothing the prophet got to say. Because they say when Jesus came, he brought the good news. That's what the gospel supposedly means. 
So obviously it wasn't good news for the Jew. Because they say good news for the sheep is bad news for the wolf. That's what Jesus brought. He brought good news, but good news for who? Good news for the sheep. Bad news for that blue-eyed wolf. So instead of them listening to Jesus, bring the good news for the sheep. They kill Jesus. They reject Jesus. They reject his good news. And they say our prophet is Moses. So then, here come the Christians. This is in the book of Acts, 7th chapter, 52 through 60. This is from somebody named Stephen. I don't know. I don't. Stephen wasn't a prophet. He was somebody with Paul. I don't really know what he was, but this was said by Stephen to the Jews. He says, which of the prophets have your fathers not persecuted? And they have slain them with shoot before of the coming of the just one. Now, what do we mean when it says shoe? Because it's S-H-E-W-E-D. That means to make known. Now, they didn't already kill Jesus, rejected him, murdered him for nothing. So now this Stephen that's coming after, the Jew, after Jesus, saying the same thing Jesus was saying about the Jew. He said, which one of the prophets have your fathers not killed? It'll be easier for you to tell us which one they didn't kill for us to go down the line of how many of the ones they did kill. So he said, which one of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? He said, and they have slain them, which in other words, come and make known the coming of the just. So that's the Jew. Not only do the Jew kill the prophets, they even kill the people who announced the coming of the prophet. That's a Jew. Yeah. They not no Muslim. A Muslim submit in time to do the will of Allah. That's right. Job did God put the devil on Job. Job didn't murder nobody and kill. He said, yea, though ye slay me, yet will I trust him. Even if he killed me, I'm still going to submit to do whatever his will is for me. But that ain't a Jew. Not only will a Jew kill a prophet, a Jew will kill you if you announce the coming of the prophet. That's the old no good Jew. Yes. So then it goes on to say, this is what the Jews did. It says, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. It cut them to their soul. That's what the truth do to a death. The Jews is a whole race of deaths. Yes. Because there is no such thing as a black Jew. No. Ain't no such thing. All you got is some black people who have accepted the religion of Judaism. That's all it was before the messenger came on the scene. Yes, sir. All you had was a bunch of niggas who was following the white man wearing small hats, doing bar mitzvahs, not caring nothing about black people who ain't Jews, just like the white man. White man don't care about nobody who ain't a Jew. He only worried about a Jew, just like these small hats. When you look at these Jews, you look at the whole civil rights movement. Name a Jew that ever said anything for the black man. You had the Black Panther Party. You had the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. You had uh, Martin Luther King, uh, the uh, Southern Christian Leadership Conference. You had the NAACP, the Nation of Israel. You had all kind of groups speaking out for the suffering of the black man. But you can't name one Jew who said anything for the black man in that time, which was the biggest outcry for justice that we ever have seen. 
No way did you see a Jew. Because the black Jew is like the white Jew. They felt like they ain't Jews. So they suffered because they niggas, but we better than them. We better than them. We ain't the same kind of niggas, so let them niggas suffer. We trying to go to Israel with the white man. So when you read about a Jew in the Bible, not only did the Jews kill the prophet, but they killed the ones who announced that the prophets was coming. So then it says, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Then it says, Stephen, it says, but he began being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing on the right hand of the Father, of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then the Jews, it says, then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears. Stephen probably thought, well, maybe if I start talking about Jesus, maybe the Jews will stop. But when he started talking all that, Jesus, I see God in heaven, and he's sitting on the right hand of Jesus. They stopped up there. It's like, get this nigga. They don't want to hear that. They are deaf. Yes, they nature is to murder the righteous. Yes, sir. So anybody that's talking about God, they stop up there. I don't want to hear that. Right. Get this nigga. So it says, then they cried out with a loud voice. Stop there ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. This wasn't Jesus. This was after Jesus. You got another man just telling them which one of the prophets your fathers haven't killed. What did he do to them? He asked them a real, which one? He said they even stoned the ones who announced the coming of the just one. So they listening to that. That simple truth cut them to their heart. To where they killed this man just for saying that. Yes, sir. That's a Jew. That's a Jew. That's they ain't no Muslim. A Muslim is one who submit they will to do the will of Allah. That's right. And if you notice Jesus, when he talking to the Jew, he said, truly ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers. He didn't say of our fathers. Like he was the same as them. He said your fathers yes. killed the Jew or killed the prophets. Not our fathers. So after Jesus, they murdered Jesus. They murdered Stephen. Then here come Prophet Muhammad. This is in uh, the Holy Quran chapter 2. Verse 87, it says, and we indeed gave Moses the book and we sent messengers after him, one after another. And we gave Jesus, son of Mary, clear arguments and strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. Now let's stop and explain this Holy Spirit. We don't want to get spooky. What is it talking about when the Holy Quran says the Holy Spirit? It says Jesus being strengthened with the Holy Spirit only means that he was granted divine revelation like other prophets before him. So let's just, I don't want to get spooked. So it says, and we indeed gave Moses the book and we sent messengers after him, one after another. And we gave Jesus, son of Mary, clear arguments and strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. Is it then that whenever there came to you a messenger with what your souls desired not, ye were arrogant? And some of them, and some you gave the lie, and others you would slay. This the Holy Quran bear witness to the same thing all the other prophets say. It's one thing that Jeremiah said that I forgot to bring. He said that these Jews make their tongue like bow and arrows. 
to shoot lies. That's what he said about a Jew. They tongues is like bow and arrow just to shoot lies. That's what Jeremiah said about a Jew. So we see that when it comes to the Jews, they do not submit their will to do the will of Allah. That's right. And that's why the messenger taught us that the Jews and the Christians were careful not to mention the religion of the prophet. Because the prophet's re re religion was simply submitting their will to do the will of Allah. That was their religion. But when bus stop bishop and everybody talk about Islam, they make you think it's some Arab stuff. They make you think it's going to Mecca doing your house. That's what they make you think Islam is. Islam means anti-submission. To the will of Allah. Yes. That's what Islam means. Yes. But let's go even further with the message. Because I want to read what one of the ministers back in the day with the messenger explained Jesus. Because we don't talk about Jesus in the same way that they talk about Jesus. We be talking this true Jew stuff. I get so sick of listening to Muslims. Talk about a true, what is a true Jew? If we was to look through the messenger's teachings, where could I find the messenger teaching us about what, is, what a true Jew is? Because with this hypocrite Lewis, he is the one who made black people think that the white man ain't a real Jew. But we the true Jew. We the true murderers of the prophet. We the true ones who killed Jesus. We murdered Stephen just for him telling us the truth. That's what we, the white man didn't do that. That was us because we the true Jew. But let's go to August 22nd, 1969, Muhammad Speaks. And this article is called When He Comes and it was written by Yusuf Shah. He says last week, we dis discuss prophecies by Jesus concerning the coming of the last messenger of Allah. Jesus prophesied that not only would the last messenger teach us the truth of Israel to whom Jesus was sent, but the last messenger would teach us into all truth. That's what ministers with the messenger used to say about Jesus. They weren't talking about we a true Jew. They weren't talking about we, the Jews is really black people and all this stuff we say now. They talking about how Jesus is like, he prophesied of the last message. Yes. He prophesied how the last messenger, not only would he tell us about Israel, or the truth about them, but he would teach us into all truth. Yes. All truth. Is coming for the black man by a message. Yes, sir. That's what the good news of Jesus was. The good news of Jesus was talking about the messenger of Allah. Yes, sir. This was Jesus' good news. Yes. It was good news for the sheep, but it was bad news for the wolf. That's right. So the brother goes on. He said Jesus' office terminated with Israel as Jesus was not a prophet sent to convert Israel to Allah. For the conversion of Israel could not have been accomplished due to the nature in which Israel was made. Cut dry, straight to the point. That's right. Wasn't none of this true Jew stuff. Wasn't none of this nonsense that we say now. It was always cut and dry about Jesus. Jesus came and his life was insignificant to a Jew. The messenger told us that if Jesus would not have died for the truth that he taught, we wouldn't know nothing about Jesus. I think the messenger said the most people Jesus talked to at one time was 30 people. That was the, the biggest crowd he had, 30 people. 
them Jews didn't want to hear nothing Jesus had to say. So Jesus prophesied and said, when he come, he is the one who will lead you into all truth. Yes. That was the good news. The good news that the Jews didn't want to hear. So then it goes on even further. It says in his work of trying to convert Israel to Islam, the religion of Allah God, Jesus had to learn that Israel was a people made deaf. Jesus learned that Israel by nature was a people not made to accept the truth and that they were murderers of the true bearers of truth, which is the prophets. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cut dry, simple and plain. Never said nothing about a true Jew. Never said nothing that some Israelite can take a minister to messenger and say, even black Muslims believe we the true Jew. What you about to take from what he said? That a Jew gonna say, oh, the Muslims think we, no. Israel got a nature yeah. to rebel against Allah. Jesus came to convert them to Islam. But after Jesus tried so hard to get them to submit, he learned that these are people whose nature is against Allah. That's what Jesus was on the scene to do. Yes. So then it goes on to say, he said Jesus denounced them as being such in the Bible, Matthew 23 and 37, in these words, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killeth the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. He says Jerusalem here does not refer to a city. It refers to a people, Israel. For Israel killed prophets in other parts of the country other than Jerusalem. In fact, to my knowledge, we don't have any history of Israel killing any prophet in Jerusalem other than Jesus himself. Actually, the city of Jerusalem itself did not kill the prophets. The reason we charge Jerusalem with being the killer of the prophets is because Jerusalem was the city where the evil brains who ruled had their seat of authority. Simple and plain. The, and that's why I can't get off bus stop now. If you read them lectures that them ministers with so crisp, so clear, how they explain it, he telling the black man in the Bible, it says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, O ye who murdered the prophet. He let you know Jerusalem ain't never murdered the prophet. Only prophet to his knowledge that was murdered in Jerusalem was Jesus. But the reason why it's talking about Jerusalem because the top brains, the top evil brains of the Jew, that's what they see of a thought. Yes, sir. That's why I'm saying Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Yes, sir. Who else was breaking down science like that for the black man? Nobody but the message. They taught us the scriptures that show us that Israel had a nature to rebel against God. The messenger said in John chapter 8, verse 42 through 44. That was the messenger's go-to verse. It says, ye are of your father the devil. That's when Jesus had finally learned, ain't no more trying to convert these Jews. He said, ye are of your father. Messenger broke down what of me. He said of is not talking about a people who lean towards evil. You got some people who good, but they just start doing evil. That's the black man. The black man is a man who's righteous by nature. Right. But the messenger told us that the black man has been in the hands of an enemy. We've been taught by the enemy. 100%. So the messengers say we lean towards evil. But the white man ain't like that. He ain't like that to be a man who right, but then he, he's 100% wicked and evil. That's right. That's it. So that's why Jesus said, you are of your father.
father. He ain't say you acting like your father. He ain't say y'all yo, start acting like your father this point in time. He said, no, ye are of your father the devil. Yes. And the lust of your fathers ye will do. Yes, so it ain't no point in me trying to waste my time making them Muslims. They going to do the lust of their father. That's what they going to do. He said, the truth is not in you. That's what Jesus said. Because the messenger said Jesus learned about their history. He learned about Yaqub. Yaqub was a black scientist who crafted the white race on the island of Pila. Messenger told us that he used a system called birth control. He said it was the birth control law. He said in a birth control law, you save the brown and kill the black. Messenger said it was Yaqub who was the first to discover that the black man had two people in him. He said one was black and one was brown. He said that Yaqub discovered if he could separate the brown from the black and graft the brown down into his last stage with his wife. He said he could make a people to rule the black man. That's right. Messenger told us not only did he teach us that, he said that Yaqub was playing with two pieces of steel. He said one of the pieces of steel had magnetic in it. And one of the pieces was drawing the other one to his pot. So he said that Yaqub discovered in playing with two pieces of steel how to make an unlike people who will attract the black man. That's the teachings of the message. That's it. So when Jesus saw the Jew, he said, ye of your father the devil. The devil is Yaqub, a black scientist who made the white race. And the messenger said, 600 years. Yes, sir. It took Yaqub to grab the white from the black. Yes. Messenger said, Yaqub had many labels. He said that when the, mo the mother would have a black baby, he said the nurse would take the baby, they would either cremate the baby or feed the baby to a wild beast. There was some hardcore teachings yes. to hear from the message. Yes. So you mean to say, because I'm going to just tell you how I felt when I first was reading. I'm like, you mean to say, Yaqub was righteous. He was a black man. He was righteous. And he teaching them how to take babies and feed them to Alec, wild beasts and cremate them. That's what it is. Messenger said Yaqub was a scientist. Yes. He said Yaqub told his uncle, I'm going to make a people who going to rule you. Messenger said Yaqub's uncle said, what will you make other than something that will call bloodshed? Mm -hmm. He said, I know what you know not. Yaqub knew the white man, the black man had an imperfection. So the messenger said, Yaqub brought out of us what we did not know was in us. That's right. We didn't know we had another people. So the messenger said, Yaqub brought it out and he taught that how to rule us. Taught that imperfection. Yes. But the messenger said, Yaqub was on the island of Pilate. He said he saw the beginning and the end of the white man. Messenger said Yaqub lived 150 years. He said Yaqub never saw a white man. But he asked us in our lessons, why was Yaqub so successful in all his undertakings? It said because they obeyed Yaqub no matter what he said. They obeyed him to the letter. That's right. So they said Yaqub was successful. Messengers say Yaqub didn't build prison house to house his people. He said once one of them broke the law, he said off with they hate. Right. That was Yaqub. Yaqub was a rough fella. But the messenger said Yaqub was on the island of Pilon. He said he saw the beginning of the white man and he saw his end. He said he saw Master Farad Muhammad come. He saw the Mahdi. He said, you only got 6,000 years 
to do all your work. But it's one coming. He likes seven cats to one mouse. He said you ain't a meal to one of the cats. That's Master Farad Muhammad. God in person. Yes, sir. So the messenger said, he said Master Farad Muhammad was born to save the black man. Yes. We living in the time of the rule of the Jews, the Israelites. They rule the black man. By tricks and lies. The white man add tricks and lies in the box. The white man careful not to tell us our religion. The white man got us believing in a mystery God. Some God that we can't see. We got a God that came and raised the messenger that was more successful than any man we ever seen in our life. Yes. But the messenger said we've been taught lies in such a way. That when the truth came to us, we would automatically reject. We would rather believe God is some spook than believe God is Master Farad Muhammad. Master Farad Muhammad is the one who came. Search for the black man. Master Farad Muhammad is the one who went to Black Bottom, Detroit, July 4th, 1930. He came himself. That's something that the black man need to know. Yes. He didn't come with nobody else helping him. He came himself yes. searching for the black man. Then he found himself a message. Yes. And he chose that message. He guided that messenger for 44 long years. Yes. Not a messenger gone. But that truth that he taught is still strong. Messenger said that what Master Farad Muhammad comes to be will last forever. He said the prophets see no end, or the scientists see no end to that world that's coming in. He said it's a good end for those of us who hold to Islam. He said eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor have it entered into the heart of man what Allah got in store for us. We can't even dream about the goodness that Master Farad Muhammad got for us. But even if we don't see, we still work hard. Because we still the black man. One of us successful, all of us successful. Just to know that they could be talking about us in the hereafter makes me want to work hard to the day I die. So they can talk about us like we talk about Jesus. They can talk about us like they talked about Moses. Talk about them believers. They might not even say us, talk about us by name. They might just say them believers back in the wilderness. They held on for so many years after the message. It wasn't but a few of them. We don't know how they gonna talk about it. They might not say our name, but they say, I wanna be in that number. When the saints go marching in. Yes, sir. Just as long as when they say the believers, they talking about me too. The believers in the will. Yes. That's good enough for me. Yes, sir. Well, brothers and sisters, we don't want to prolong the time. So I leave you as I came in the nation of Islam's greeting words, peace of Aslam Alay. Enjoying the show? Help keep us on the air. 313-371-7033. That's 313-371-7033 to make a donation. Brothers and sisters, we rise for prayer. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the beneficent, the merciful. So message day of judgment in which we now live. The alone do we serve, and the alone seeks for thine help and aid. O oh Allah, please guide us on the right path, path of those upon whom thou hast filled thy favors, not on the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray after they heard thy teachings. Say he Allah is one God. Allah is he of whom nothing is independent, but upon whom we all depend. He begat us not, nor is he begotten, there is none like him. And I bear witness. The nuns are to be served, worshipped, or praised besides Allah, who came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad. 
And I bear witness that the honorable Elijah Muhammad is thy true servant and last apostle. I mean, the honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us not to do anything to anyone that we wouldn't have done it to ourselves and treat everybody right, even the devil. So I'm a lake.